merch. Okay, let's begin the homily. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Parents, I don't know if your kids say this a lot, but wouldn't you love them to say, Mom and Dad, I love your rules. I love all the rules that you give me, all the laws. For us, and maybe boys and girls, it's good for you to know, I love the laws of God, right? That God's, his rules and his laws are really good, and they're very important. And when God gives us his laws, they're not to hurt us. Hopefully, like your parents' laws aren't to hurt you, but they're actually there to help us. They're to make us better. They're to keep us safe from danger and harm and to set us up so that we can be happy, that we can follow him very closely. In the psalm we pray today, blessed are those who walk in the law of God. Blessed are those who walk in the law of God. And then in the first reading from Sirach, if you choose, you can keep the commandments and they will save you. If you choose, you can do it. You can keep the commandments and they will save you. When we're thinking about laws, maybe the first thing that jumps to mind in the Bible is when Moses received the Ten Commandments. We remember the story, right? How Moses received these rules, these laws from God. You might remember how first he saw the burning bush and he went to see and there he talked to God. And that's when God called him to take his people out of Egypt and to lead them to the promised land. And then on that journey, there was a mountain, Mount Sinai, where God told Moses to go to this mountain and there first, first to pray, to pray and prepare the people for three days so that they could make a consecration of themselves to God. And then on the third day at the base of that mountain, they heard a trumpet blast and Moses told all the people, the Israelites, to come to that mountain to gather around because God was going to act. And so they came to the mountain and there at the foot of the mountain, they saw that there was a smoke that was coming forth, and the whole mountain was covered in smoke. It says that the Lord descended upon it in fire. And then that sound of the trumpet grew even louder. The blast grew even louder. And it says that God spoke in the thunder, and the mountain shook. Moses went up the mountain to talk to God and to pray. And it was there that Moses received the Ten Commandments on those two tablets that were written by the finger of God. Moses came down and shared with the people what he had received from God. And the people were terrified. <laughs> what kind of God is this, right? They knew, but also they had a healthy fear of God. And they told Moses, we're too afraid to go up the mountain to talk to God, why don't you go on our behalf? They said, you, you speak to us, Moses, you speak to us and we will hear, but let not God speak to us lest we die. And so they appointed Moses to speak on their behalf. And Moses would go up the mountain a number of times and for 40 days and 40 nights, remember how he was up the mountain and then how the people grew restless and all that had happened. <coughs> Moses spoke to God, he received the Ten Commandments, and he announced them and gave them to the people. And these commandments were for their good, not for their harm. Keeping these commandments, they would be able to follow God very closely. Now, we're much later, right? It was a long time ago that Moses received these commandments and all that had happened with that at Mount Sinai. What value do the commandments hold today? Our Lord Jesus tells us in the gospel, he says, do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. These 10 commandments were given by God and they were true thousands of years ago and they're true here and now today. They're just as true today, right? We need these commandments, these rules of God, and they are a great help to us in our lives. What our Lord Jesus is looking to do is not to get rid of any of those commandments or to say, we don't like that one anymore, or this one's outdated, but he's saying, no, no, all of those are true forever, and now I would like to go even deeper, right? He wants to take those commandments and, and dig even deeper into their meaning so we can benefit even more. Do you remember? Do you remember the Ten Commandments? What are they, right? What are those Ten Commandments? Do you remember? Um, for, for us, right? We want to have those commandments deeply embedded in our minds. 
And that's why it's a great thing to memorize, to memorize certain things. When you're memorizing it, it's like you're taking this thing out there and you're like ingraining it or like sticking it in, in, into your head, right? So that it's in your mind that you won't forget and even it will be there to, to fall back on and to remind yourself of very easily. For us, we want to memorize the Ten Commandments, memorize a number of things in our faith so that it can be fully integrated into our lives. So then we'll be able to live it out more fully. We'll be able to be closer to God because his commands, his teachings will be deeper inside of us. And so these Ten Commandments, yeah, I would ask you, right, if you, maybe you have them all memorized. For lots of kids, uh, they, they learn them and they memorize them and it's good. But for us adults, we need to have them down too. Um, if I were to ask you, right, what is the fourth commandment? Who knows, right? What's the fourth? We should memorize them not just in general, but even in order and be ready just like that to be able to give them. Not to show off or anything, right? But it's so that, that yeah, that these are really living and inside of us, these commands. The fourth commandment, it's honor your mother and father, right? Um, what about maybe the, the eighth commandment? What's the eighth commandment? That you shall not bear false witness, right? That, that, that we shall not lie. If we were to go through them, we should be able to list them one after another. Not a, it's not a memorization game or something. It's not to show off, but it's so that we can, we can have them like inside of us fully. As we think of Christ, he takes these commandments and now he wants to help us to go deeper, right? He gives us an example. Um, you've heard in ancient times, right? He's saying, you remember the laws of Moses, thou shall not kill. Right? For some people, they think thou shalt not kill. Well, it just literally means don't kill anyone, right? Um, and, and it does mean that, but it means much more than that. And Christ is looking to show us the deeper meaning. He says not only should you not kill someone, but, but be very careful about anger, about insulting, right? about calling someone a fool. Be careful about all of these things which kind of fall under that one commandment of thou shalt not kill as well as for, for adultery, right? It's not just enough to say, okay, don't commit adultery, that's, that's good and true. But there's more than that, right? There's a deeper meaning. And Christ wants to show us that it also means that we ought not even to lust after another person. We ought not to objectify another person. We ought not to use another person for our own pleasure in a selfish way, right? The, that commandment means, means much more, and it's much richer and more fruitful when we reflect upon it with Jesus. As well, then, for thou shalt not swear or bear false witness to let your yes be yes and your no to be no. For us, maybe you're thinking, yeah, I know all of this, right? I've got the Ten Commandments, they're mastered, I've got them in my mind. If you do, that's great. I've got another challenge for you, right? We have in our church more of the teachings of Christ that we've been reflecting on the past few weeks in the eight Beatitudes, right? Do you have memorized, do you have ingrained in your mind those eight Beatitudes of Jesus? We have a great help, as you know, in our church. They're on both sides. Every time you come, you can come and look at them and go over them until you get them memorized and, 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 they're, and they're in your head, right? I was looking at these ones. I think I have these ones down. To be merciful, clean or pure of heart, peacemakers, and uh, the last one about justice, right? Blessed are those who are persecuted for justice's sake. Um, it'd be good to have all of those ingrained in our mind too, not to show off, but to help us to live them out, right? When we know them, when we're reflecting on them, when we're, they're a part of, of our lives. And so uh, for today, for today, we want to say to all the children and to God that we love his rules, we love his commands. We know that these are for our good, not for our harm, and we want to make them more a part of our lives. Dear Lord, we want to ask you, right, to not only give us your teachings, but to help us to integrate them, to make them a part of our very selves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.